What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a bit of a two-part video today. I should really make it into um, two separate videos, but it's probably not going to be long enough, so I don't want to clickbait you all too much. But um, So I'm thinking about doing some modifications to the uh, 2021 Ford Transit Custom. So we're going to have a chat about that. Um, but also, I am aware that I owe you lot an explanation. I've been doing a series of videos that hopefully some of you have seen. If not, check up here. Uh, about my um, uh, quest to buy a super naked bike for the road um, and some of you who follow the channel will probably know when I went to buy a super naked bike I actually bought a, a Panigale instead of V4S um, so I know a lot of you are looking forward to seeing that super naked so I figured I, uh, I owed you an explanation about that there was a few sort of um, uh, factors that made me uh, change my mind so uh, let's uh, let's get cracking and uh, not waste any time and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you all about it yeah so look um, I realize this might not be a massively exciting video but I, I just wanted to uh, I felt like I owed you a lot an explanation there's so many people that were expecting wanting looking forward to uh, Street Fighter uh, or some other sort of super naked coming to the channel um, and I don't want you to think that's not going to be the case that's far from it um, but look just to get straight into it why did I buy the V4S uh, the 2021 V4S Panigale over the uh, Street Fighter um, th th there's a few reasons really but if I'm honest with you I went to the dealership the day that I bought the Panigale with every intention um, of buying a Street Fighter. As, that's what I was going to do. I'd, I'd, I'd figured out how much it was going to cost me and I was going to do a deal. And um, and I saw the Panigale and it was just like, oh, I just I just don't think I can do it. I, like, I wanted that bike so much. Um, and a lot of you watched my Road to New Superbike video and I reviewed the V4S Panigale on that. And some of the comments I made about that bike were taken a bit out of context. So I was basically saying it was a bit too much. Uh, I'm not sure what people meant by that. I didn't mean too much money. I didn't mean too much power. Um, what I meant at that particular time in my life, like so almost a year ago now, that, that bike was not the right bike for me at the time. Um, I knew that I wanted to do a load of track days. And um, uh, I knew that that was where the, the bike that I bought was going to spend most of its life and also frankly at that point in my life last year I couldn't afford to have um, a track bike and a road bike and a dirt bike I just couldn't afford it um, and I knew I wanted a dirt bike coming into the summer so I'd got some money put aside for that but the main thing at that point I wanted the bike for was track riding um, so I sort of I decided I didn't want a road bike, put the V4, uh, the RSV4 all track, and I didn't want to do that to a V4S, right? I didn't want to, you know, strip it off and put cheap, crappy plastic race fairings on, and you know, I just I didn't want to do it. Um, that bike was too much. Um, it was just too special, is what I actually meant. It was just far too special, and it was a bike that I knew that I would want to buy and I'd want to keep and keep it pretty much standard and just look after it and take it to the seaside and polish it lots and just really do things with that bike uh, in, a, in, a, in a not a gentle way because I will take it to the track um, maybe a couple of three times a year, but only on a sort of like you know 75% outing it's it's a bike that bike for me is something that's more of a um it's really difficult to explain particularly that sounding like a bit of a bell end to be honest but it's more uh it's more a statement of achievement that bike and that's not going to make any sense to anybody and they're going to be like well what are you talking about and it's just like i'm not going to get too deep and meaningful in this video but you know um you know i worked quite hard and i you know i i had uh I didn't perhaps have the uh, most, um, uh, I had a good childhood, but I, 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 I wasn't particularly, 
Uh, I, I was never going to be, until I got my shit together, uh, I, I was never going to amount to a great deal in life for quite a long period of my life, honestly. Uh, you know, I went down the wrong tracks and did a few things that I shouldn't really do and didn't really concentrate on career or saving money or anything else. I just wanted to be a bit of a knob. Um, and, you know, a lot of people in my life, me included, thought that, you know, I'd probably never get anywhere. I certainly never thought I'd be able to own a Ducati, let alone two other bikes. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm not trying to boast here. Please don't take it like that. That's not the intention. I'm just trying to give you a bit of an idea of my thought processes. But that Ducati is just an absolute dream bike. You know, it's just something that, you know, as soon as I saw it came out in 2018, it was just like you just fall in love with something. And, you know, I, I said, I think, I think on the original video, it's something that I just want to put under some spotlights in a garage. And to a point, that's true. You know, I want to ride that bike, and I'm, I intend on doing a lot of miles on that. I intend on taking it to the Alps and doing a lot of stuff on the road with it. And, um, yeah, we'll see. But it was just too much, too much to abuse, too much to buy for a track-only bike. Um, but things have gone fairly well for me lately, and, and uh, you know, I've worked pretty hard. Um, I've, I've had some success over the last year or so, uh, a couple of years at least. Um, and I'm, I'm in a position now, a very fortunate position, where I can actually afford to have that bike. I've nowhere to put the thing. <laughs> I still actually, it's coming in about five weeks and I still don't know where I'm going to put it. I haven't got room in the garage for it, so some things, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to put it in the front room or the kitchen or, <laughs> or some shit. I've really no idea. But I'll figure that out. Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, so yeah, so look, I've I've got enough money to be able to justify doing it now, um, and I'm I'm gonna I've, I've bought that bike, uh, I've bought it. Uh, and I say that, yeah, I mean, look, why not? I talk about these things. Being honest, you know, there's certain things that I would finance, and there's certain things that I wouldn't for different reasons. Happy to go into it if anybody cares, but I've not financed that bike. I've just paid for it outright, and the reason that I have done that is because I have every intention of keeping that bike for a, a fairly long period of time. Um, you know, it's something that. Uh, so I, I've got a bit of, I'm going to say inside information, but it's not, it's more rumour. But it might come true and it makes sense. So I've got a bit of inside information that the next Panigale that comes out, which could potentially be um, in a year's time, will more than likely, not definite, but will more than likely have some form of hybrid or electric powertrain. And Ducati have got a bit of a history of innovating in these sorts of areas. And the rumor is that that's gonna be the next thing. Uh, and I just don't think the electric slash hybrid bikes are, are the thing. I don't think they're gonna have the market. I don't think people want that. Um, maybe some people do and maybe they'll grow to want it and maybe they'll get more popular. But I, I just don't think they will. And what I think could happen, and this isn't the reason for buying it, but it's definitely a consideration, you know, I'm not made of money. Um, what I think could happen is if that does happen and these electric bikes come out, I think the V4S could appreciate in value um, because it would technically be the last of the sort of naturally aspirated um, Ducati sort of super sport top of the range bikes. So there's a chance, a possibility that it could appreciate, but that's a very distant thing. Um, you know, the main the main reason I bought that was it's just, you know, I saw the Street Fighter and really that's the proper bike to buy. It's the best road bike. It would do exactly what I want it to do. It would be comfortable. It would be exciting. But there was just something about that Panigale. I know it's the wrong bike. It's not the right bike for a road bike. It's completely irresponsible. It's five grand more than I need to spend on a bike. Um, but, but. It's just, this is just an emotional decision. You know? It's an emotional, irrational, illogical, stupid um, purchase, but it's, um, it's what I want to do, right? It's just, uh, I, I, it was, I couldn't help it. I was literally, as corny as this may sound, I was literally just compelled, compelled to do it. Um, so yeah, I, I've managed to be able to buy my dream bike, um, <laughs> which still is a bit mind boggling really, but yeah, that's, um, that's why I bought it. Uh, I know some of you want to see Street Fighter. Now, there will be a Street Fighter coming to the channel at some point. Some very vague plans are, I'm going to run the RSV4 this season for track days, depending on how long that lasts with lockdown. Uh, but at the end of this season, the RSV4 will go. I'll put that back to road bike spec and that will go. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that. Um, I might buy a Street Fighter. I'm fairly 
confident that that will be the thing. Although, <laughs> this is what I'm like, I have the attention span of a five-year-old. I really like the look of that ZX-10. Um, so I might buy a ZX-10 for a track bike. I don't know. I'm too scatty. Um, so yeah, look, that's a quick explanation. That's why I bought the uh, Panigale. I hope you don't mind. I hope you understand. There'll be plenty more Street Fighter and Super Naked content coming to the channel this year. There's loads of stuff coming on. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, look, quick video, quick explanation. But moving on to the next subject, part two of this video and why I wanted to uh, bring the, the 2021 Ford Transit Custom is, I'm thinking about modifying this um, and I want some advice. I'm not really sure where to go. I don't. I, I kind of want to go like full A team, BA Baracus van spec on this, um, but I don't know anything about doing it. Um, so let's have a walk round, and I'll tell you what my my initial thoughts are, and hopefully you can get in the comments and let me know. Um, but yeah, let's go and have a walk round. So, what I was thinking, obviously, excuse the weather. I might have to get back in. The wind's really bad. But the first thing. Is, So these have got some pretty small wheels on at the minute, so I want to upgrade the wheels. I also want to upgrade the, uh, the front um, grille as well. Uh, I'm thinking about lowering it and getting some... Uh, the van's going to be sign written up in mostly motorbike sort of fashion. Um, but I'd be interested to hear about uh, what people think of that. And I also want a body kit on there, so... I've seen you can get like rear rear spoilers. I'm not sure about front spoilers. I feel like they'd be a um, recipe for getting smashed off on speed bumps, but let me know what you think. Um, and the other thing I want to do is kit out the inside of it somehow, but I don't know what's available to me. I need room for one, two, two bikes in here. But what I was thinking is, is there anything I can do with this space up here? Because I've got these ramps that I feel could be better stored um, and I'm, I want some extra storage so um, yeah so those are some ideas I've got I'm just get inside the van because the wind is horrendous so yeah so I'm thinking about uh, upgrading the wheels put some decent uh, alloys on body kit uh, it's gonna get sign written um, I don't know whether I need to upgrade the performance of it or not uh, maybe. I know you can get them remapped, but there's sort of various uh, schools of thought about warranty. There's a brand new van, really, so I've got uh, three years' warranty on it. If I get it remapped, do I lose my warranty? Some say yes, some say no, some say they'll never know. Um, anyone who's done it, I'd appreciate if you get in the comments and let me know. Um, so yeah, so those are just some thoughts on the van. I want to do something interesting for the channel with the van because lots of people really like this van. I know it's a motorbike channel, but every time I upload a video of the van, it, it does really well. So people want to see it. So look, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll film whatever you want. Um, I'll film me uh, 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 disco dancing if that's what you really want. <laughs> um, I'm not proud. Uh, yeah, so look, a bit of a scatty update video really probably not the most interesting video but i felt like i owed you a bit of an explanation and give you some plans on this um what's coming up next is a few bike reviews coming up i was supposed to be going to andalusia in february that's canned uh, portimao in may has also been moved because of covid and it's moved some race events around but i've rebooked onto an april portimao so hopefully that portimao event will happen and we'll be back uh, in the swing of things by april and I've got uh, Cadwell on the 25th of March and Donington on the 30th. They might be the other way around. I can't remember without looking. But I've definitely got track down on the 25th of March. And definitely one on the 30th of March. And it's Cadwell and Donington. I'm not sure what order. So if anybody's out there, if anybody follows my Patreon, happy to meet up with you. Just hit me up in the Patreon um, and we'll figure something out. We can do a meetup or whatever. Um, but yeah, look, other than that, I'm going to stop rambling and leave you to it now. So, um, yeah. Thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks to all our new subscribers. If you do like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you hit that bell icon, uh, you'll get notified when I release new content. And there is some exciting stuff to come. Admittedly, this might not be one of them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, look, thanks. Thanks for watching. See you later.